channel. I'm Miguel Malenciano and this is Evolution Angler Bassin. How's that bite? Today's episode of What's in the Box is completely covered by Z-Man and we are completely covering that Z-Man jackhammer and Z-Man stealth plate jackhammer chatterbait. Reason being, take a look at the footage. Oh my god, he broke me off! Son of a b Took my jackhammer, bro, that was a four and a half. Yeah, so that happened to me. Off a big fish in a tournament situation. But no use crying over spilled milk, right? Just ended up ordering a couple more. But instead of ordering two jackhammers, this time what I ordered was jackhammer and the jackhammer stealth blade and I hadn't done a what's in the box for these lures yet because I already had them in my arsenal but they definitely do deserve a what's in the box spotlight we're talking about the best of the best in terms of bladed jigs that the bladed jig market has to offer and in terms of the price versus performance there is a lot of debate so Let's just jump right into the action. All right, so the first lure up is gonna be the original Z-Man Jackhammer Chatterbait. And this one is the Green Pumpkin Shad, or rather it's in the Green Pumpkin Shad color. And I got it in the half ounce version. This bladed jig in particular is designed by professional anglers Brett Height and Morizo Shimizu. And I'm sure by now you've heard all the commotion about this. What I like about this particular color here, um, the green pumpkin is followed up by green pumpkin on the actual blade. And then it is going to have your specks of black imitating black flake. And then the thinness, this isn't a regular chatterbait blade. You do something to the blade where the actual thinness of it produces a different action, like a hunting action bobbing and weaving which is what entrances the fish into biting that combined with the actual noise you know again blade does start up faster than an original chatterbait or any other chatterbait below this one and in terms of the actual specs on the blade it does come with decoy snap here starting from the head of the blade and then in actually getting to the head of the jig itself so it's a very realistic head. Um, it does have 3D eyes. On top of that, it does have the flattened bottom of the head, which makes it easier to skip. And it also gives it, helps out in that action, in that wide, erratic hunting action. And the actual jig head itself, it does have a low center of gravity. It just allows for overall better deflection of the bait instead of getting caught up in wood or getting caught up in heavy, heavy vegetation. You know, your chances of survival are a little bit better with that combo right there. It does come with a wire tied silicone rubber skirt. And you know, most of the colors are good. Some of them though are great. You know, you'd have to go on Tackle Warehouse or on the Z-Man website to look at all of them, but really outstanding colors for the jackhammers and for the stealth blade too. It's real good colors overall. What equipment to use this on? So there's two schools of thought on this. First off, it's gonna be either medium or a medium heavy bait casting rod. Now, where the schools of thought differ are right here. Some insist on fast or extra fast action rods while others insist on moderate or just straight up cranking rods. I am personally torn between those two categories. I think that different rods shine in different situations. For example, I'm more apt to use this on a fast action rod where there's moderate or heavy vegetation because I can rip my way out of that. As to where moderate rod, you're really gonna have to 
rip and you're gonna end up fouling up your line, causing kinks and whatnot. Now I prefer to use a moderate rod when I'm around a little bit thicker wood or light vegetation because it's more forgiving. In the example of wood, once you know you're in wood, you're in wood. And if the rod's a little bit more forgiving, you won't necessarily spike that hook deep into wood. So that's where I stand on that. In terms of line, probably somewhere around a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. I'd probably have that back with rated main line in the 20 to 25 pound range. It's a lure that's calling out to a fish's lateral line. So in terms of volume of water, less space for them to roam around, just more. It's just closer quarters combat in terms of that sound reverberating in that body of water. So I'm going to want to fish this shallow. And if you fish this shallow, just use a mono leader. Mono is going to help you float more and get away with riskier moves in that foot to two foot of water range. Instead of getting planked in a stump or something like that, you know, just use mono to help you float a little bit better. Where and how? I like to use bladed jigs as shallow as possible. Reason being that there's gonna be overall less volume of water and then this lure, it's meant to hone in on their lateral lines. So less room overall while you're producing all that vibration, it just augments everything and it makes them hone in on that bait a little bit faster. So to me, this shines more shallow than deep. But that's not to say that I won't fish it deep either or approaching deep. And I'll start approaching that deeper side if I'm fishing clear water. That's where I'll start exploiting points, bluff walls, ledges, offshore brush piles, just yo-yoing up and down. But other than that, if I'm fishing dirty water, then this is a bank runner for me. Or, you know, also shallow points, around cover, that kind of deal. I also find that this shines particularly well wherever current meets slack water like um, the beginning of an eddy wherever wind blown current is running into pads you know that kind of deal this does shine in that situation as well just for those opportunistic bass just laying in ambush waiting for a bait fish to get caught up in the current yank out and grab it yeah but the z-man evergreen jackhammer chatterbait this is definitely one to have in your arsenal based on price point and the augmented fish catches overall kind of aggressive fish that you're going for in those situations for me it's worth the price and i'll tell you why because i fish tournaments not to say that a regular chatterbait won't catch fish and won't catch big fish but if you need to put your foot on the gas and in terms of confidence you need something that you can rely on to put your foot on that gas this jackhammer Fire, definitely a must have in your arsenal. The next bladed jig we're gonna talk about in today's What's in the Box is gonna be almost the exact same thing, just a little bit scaled down, a little bit different version. This is the Z-Man Evergreen Jackhammer Stealth Blade Edition of the Chatterbait. And there are a couple key differences in this one, uh, primarily being the polycarbonate blade itself. So first, I got this in the B Height Delight color or Bite Delight color. Um, I like to call it the Bite Delight color. Gird is gonna have your mix of green pumpkin, your chartreuse, your shad flashes. Again, some of the differences, key differences as to where the regular jackhammer is gonna have the stainless steel blade. This is gonna have your high polycarbonate blade. Also, an overlooked difference, this has your oval ring instead of the decoy egg snap that the regular jackhammer has. The blade itself, smaller profile. Blade itself again, different sound. Starts up just as quick, but that smaller profile is gonna produce a different sound. And another difference is gonna be the hook. So instead of that heavy wire gamagatsu hook, you're actually gonna have a lighter duty hook here by decoy just a sharp also with the double wire keeper with the double wire keeper and other than that you know not too much difference this is in the 3 8 ounce the other one's in the half an ounce where I would 
see the difference lies is this is more of a finesse bladed jig. The sound is just more appropriate to clear water fisheries, to pressured, heavily pressured fisheries, or even in fisheries where bite is usually good, but for whatever reason on that day when you're fishing, unfortunately, the bite is shut down. I would tend to go with this one a little more than the regular jackhammer, especially something that nobody really talks about that I find to be a key thing. So as to where the spinner bait, it's a lure that's heavily dependent on wind. I think that this is just as dependent on wind as the spinner bait is. And you can get away with a little bit less wind, but overall you do need wind. Wind is a factor. I believe that the stealth blade, you can run it in less wind than a regular jackhammer or regular chatterbait and it's going to be a little bit more productive for you again because it's just that much more subtle so on days where you really want to whip out that bladed jig but you don't have much wind to back you up i would go with this one over the regular jackhammer so what equipment to use this on this one a little bit smaller bladed jig all day medium bait caster again there's two schools of thought so whichever one you're in stick to that whether it's the fast action or whether it's the more forgiving moderate action um, in terms of line size i'm going to suggest to you 10 tops 12 pound braided line um, if you can get away with the heavier then again get away with the heavier these are not cheap shallow water if you're in dirt shallow water then try to stick to mono of the same size I would say max 10 on the mono same deal uh, the speed on the reel doesn't change however if you are trying to be a little bit more finessier and taking into account that these do start up right away you can still fish it on that seven if you have a six whip out the six for the stealth plate out of fishes because overall it is a smaller lure right a little bit of finesse approach different sound again this is going to be my clear water fishery bladed jig this is going to be my pressured body of water bladed jig this is going to be even my in-person tournament bladed jig if everybody else is throwing a jackhammer and i know it then i'm going to the stealth blade and i'm probably going to put it in a little bit different situations that i see everybody else doing so other than that if you're just fishing for fun but you're whipping this one out, I would fish it more or less in the same situations as the jackhammer. Again, if you're doing fun fishing, just stick a little bit more shallower because lighter lure, you know the game. Definitely though, on par with the jackhammer. Um, saw there in the, uh, saw there in the underwater footage, a little bit different vibration and before I go today, I actually want to leave you with a little bonus on these lures in terms of trailers. You know, I told you about the line, I told you about the reels, I told you about the rods. Let me include a little bit of information on the trailers. So first and foremost, you can definitely fish these without trailers. You're welcome to. You can also put a trailer hook on them. Just keep in mind your personal weed situation. If you have a lot of weeds, a lot of vegetation in your body, some water, then I would say it's an ishne stay away from trailer hooks if you do have weeds then I would encourage the use of a trailer and this is as follows so I would say that with the regular jackhammer I'm gonna use a couple different styles but primarily with that jackhammer I'm always looking to imitate a nice chunky shad whether it be a shiner or whether it be a bluegill the bigger the profile the better unless it's like early fall and looking to imitate small little bait fish so what i have here is kitex style four inch plus swim bait and this is actually an exo swim by biospawn 
just personal preference. You're more than welcome to use whatever you'd like. But for the jackhammer in specific, I believe that as long as you're using one that's four inches and better, it's not gonna interfere with the action that's being caused by the blade on the bladed jig. It's actually gonna work in tandem with it because yes, it does have that chunky body, but that stem to the tail, it's really long and it just has just enough room, just enough play to work in tandem with the, the bladed jig as opposed to working against it. The other trailer I like to use, it's actually my favorite trailer and I'll use them on any bladed jig is going to be your worm style trailer and that's because again this one is specifically a cool baits trailer worm trailer by cool baits this enhances that erratic hunting hunting action that you get from the jackhammers and on the chatter baits that don't have that erratic hunting action it just improves it and it puts it within the ballpark of so definitely this is my favorite all-around trailer for Chatterbait. Also in areas where you don't feel 100% comfortable tossing a Chatterbait without a trailer, you need to put a little something on it, this is the go-to. Um, then we have beaver slash creature style trailers, which have, as long as they have the ridges on the flaps of the tails and they move and they kick water then these are going to be great for really all chatter baits but in specific I like to put it with that stealth blade gives it a little bit more oomph um, when you need it and then just the overall profile just works perfectly so well with the stealth blade then some other trailers that definitely do work on chatter baits that I prefer. I also toss the micro chatter baits. If I do it with a skirt, then most of the time I'll just toss that on its own. If I do it skirtless, then I'm gonna use single tail grub, or specifically the zooms. I like the chartreuse, the bright colors, and I also like the natural colors. I'll stick to the natural colors in clear bodies of water and that is a small little piece of ammunition packing a big punch it's fish catching all sorts of fish all sizes of fish go after that so yeah that's what i have for you today in terms of jackhammer the stealth blade and little tips and tricks that's what's in the box for today that's not where the festivities end so we got something in the mail got that last mighty mount from yak attack which now i can actually start the boat mod the install of the tracks and more importantly get the anchor wizards in one in the front one in the back and in terms of our contest we have reached 100 subscribers feels good first of all second of all i remind you what the giveaway was we had a z-man cross-eye football jig green pumpkin red flash she had the z-man baby goats in that hot craw color goes well with the red flash plays off the green pumpkin one of my favorite lures definitely my favorite worm ribbon tail worm um, this one here is the biospawn exo ribbon seven inch red flake and once it's tossed in the water you're gonna see not a hint of chartreuse a whole bucket full of chartreuse pop out of this worm this is fish catcher Dual Gobi series gulp and hyper tails. This can be used as a swim bait, can be used as an eco rig. Definitely a cool lure to have. So the giveaway winner. Boom. 100 subscriber giveaway winner is the Funk in Connecticut. Congrats, man. I'll be uh, I'll be contacting you probably right here through YouTube get your email uh, so I can get your address and whatnot um, or if you see this before I've sent you anything then my emails up there send me an email have a nice little package for you it's definitely gonna be on its way soon yeah got a lot more content coming for you guys got the boat mod got a couple what more what's in the boxes and more importantly right now I'm going to finish out this KBF challenge other than that I gotta go so for now
now YouTube. I'm Miguel Valenciano. This is Evolution Angler Bastin. And as usual, we'll see you next time.